Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to SCM TV. This is lesson four in our 10 lesson basic course on the supply chain operations reference or score model. In the last three lessons, we discussed the score model in general as a reference tool to help supply chain professionals drive value into their supply chain processes. Today, we are going to do a reset. I'll explain. Now, the pandemic has accelerated many pre-existing trends, and supply chain is no exception. Surveys reported that 64% of surveyed supply chain executives say digital transformation will accelerate due to the pandemic. By 2035, 45% of supply chains are expected to be mostly autonomous. Example, robots in warehouses and stores, driverless forklifts and trucks, delivery drones, and fully automated planning. However, simply utilizing digital technologies does not equate to creating a digitized automated supply chain. It also needs connected supply chain technologies across planning, procurement, manufacturing, and logistics that work beyond the organization's four walls. It's the difference between doing digital and being digital. An example is responding to a change in customer demand, seen instantly by the entire value chain so they can collectively adjust supply plans and production schedules immediately. Ultimately, digital and autonomous technologies will help make people's job easier and the supply chain more efficient and optimized. In other words, the world's supply chains have been reset, so to speak, and so has the score model. A digital task force was set up during the pandemic that kind of identified how to migrate, you know, towards this digital future. How do I get score itself off of a thousand page document into a digital environment where you can easily reference it? So essentially looking at how do we use score to solve the problems that we're going to need to solve in 2030. A total of about 70 subject matter experts across the globe came together for several months, and that resulted in a reset of the score model from what we have discussed this far to score digital standard or score DS in short. Now, things have changed. Before you can just give a forecast and production will make sure that product is there. There are constraints and disruptions on both sides of the equation that need to be reconciled and orchestrated. It's the primary reason for the new score digital standard. So henceforth, I will help you to understand what it is and how to use it. Of course, you can still use the old score model, but the idea was there were too many things happening all at the same time in the old linear way of thinking. Now, this way of thinking was born out of technology that we could only do one thing at a time back in the 90s and 2000s. Well, you know, today that's not the case. Everything happens all at once, and so there's no longer this idea around sequential linear calculations. So in September 2022, the new score DS was released as the most significant update since the inception of score in 1996. The new score DS modernizes the open access framework to include resilience, economic and sustainability metrics and benchmarks. Process changes supporting retail omni-channel, strategic sourcing, and orchestration of supply chain strategy. In addition, the new DS moves the supply chain thinking from a linear trading partner orientation to a dynamic asynchronous supply network that focuses on market drivers, visibility, and collaboration. So we go to the next chart. I want to really emphasize score 
as a reference framework for supply chain. If you'd like to learn more about SCORE, please use the QR code that here on the bottom left, where that takes you is that it takes you to the AACM website that provides you a link to the actual SCORE reference model. So I really encourage you to play around with that because it provides you with information on case studies as well. Now, from a high-level perspective, SCORE DS focuses on four key areas. It focuses on performance, process, best practice, and skills for supply chain. So you can think of it as almost a dictionary in these four areas for supply chain. It helps us to do benchmarking. SCORE contains a standard set of metrics for supply chain, so you can use the standard set of metrics to benchmark yourself. It contains a standard set of processes for supply chain, so you can start to look at these processes, see how your company implements these processes, develop your process mapping, all backed by a framework that contains a set of best practices for supply chain. And here again, it's an opportunity to look through those best practices, identify which are applicable to your supply chain and consider implementation. And then the last very important piece, it contains a set of skills. It identifies skills that are important for supply chain. And the real power of SCORE is that it allows for cross-referencing. So you can look at the model, you can identify a supply chain process, and for that particular process, it helps you to identify what are the key metrics, what are the key skills, and what are the best practices. What's really nice is SCORE is kind of this universal reference model. The power in it comes as you apply it to your business. So you may have three or four different supply chains. This model can be used for all of those and it can help you identify the differentiators in all of those. The real impact to your operating model and the way that you do your business. So SCORE is managed by ESGM through a consortium of industry partners and we have a lot of different companies and a lot of different sectors that are involved with any updates to the model. The idea is to keep the model relevant over time. So certainly supply chains have changed and it has changed a lot since the early 90s. And we wanted to make sure that the score is still a reference that can be utilized across the board. The biggest update to score has been focused on the digital nature of supply chains. It's been focused on trying to ensure that score is applicable not just to supply chains that are traditionally manufacturing oriented, but also oriented towards more service supply chains. And then the other big piece of this has been sustainability and really embedding the concept of sustainability into the reference model. Now, let's get to know the score DS graphic. The score DS graphic is a double infinity diagram representing today's loop, continuous and connected supply chain. This diagram shows the connection between the seven main processes and groupings for supply chain process. The horizontal infinity loop illustrates the balance to achieve between demand and supply. Demand on the left drives the supply of goods on the right. At the center of each supply chain is orchestrate. It represents all coordination processes that enable a supply chain to work effectively and align with company strategies, business rules, human resources, and technology. Regenerate and synchronize are linked through the vertical infinity loop. Regenerate is vital because today's supply chains do more than most products. The modern supply chain focuses on returns, revisions, and after-sales services. Synchronize helps by constantly matching the flow of goods between demand and supply. 
because regenerate and synchronize have to do with both the demand and supply side, they are both blue and green. Plan at the top is about planning demand and supply based on forecast and available capacity. Planning needs to be done for all other processes. Order is about the processes related to receiving and processing customer orders. Source describes all processes related to the sourcing of raw materials, components, or services which are needed to fulfill the order. Transform is the part where companies create products or services. Source and transform represent the supply side of the horizontal infinity loop. Now let's return to the demand side. Fulfill is about the demand side flow of goods. Once the order has been processed, the material source or services delivered, or products or services created by the transform processes, we are ready to deliver the product from the customer order. This completes the demand side of the horizontal infinity loop. But we still have one space left. Return is at the bottom of the vertical infinity loop on the regenerate side. Return can be critical for achieving the strategic sustainability goals of the company. So return is a two-way street. Like plan, it affects both demand and supply. The return processes describe the activities associated with the reverse flow of goods, services, or any service components from a customer. So SCORE is not a static set. SCORE DS is open access and fully digital. It is even more comprehensive than the previous versions with the inclusion of sustainability standards and supply chain orchestration enablers. So SCORE DS shifts thinking from a linear supply chain model to a more synchronous network. As you all know, SCORE spans all customer interactions from order entry through the paid invoice. It spans all the physical material transaction from the supplier supplier to the customer's customer, including transactions for equipment, suppliers, spare parts, bulk products, and software. It also covers all the market interaction from understanding aggregate demand to fulfilling each order. And as I said before, SCORE does not attempt to describe every business process or activity. Specifically, SCORE does not address sales and marketing, including demand generation and product development, as well as research and development. Now, what is the purpose of the SCORE DS framework? The SCORE DS framework aims to assist supply chains in solving business problems, as simple as that, and at the same time improving processes and performance. SCORE views this objective as consisting of four primary techniques. The first is to pursue continuous supply chain improvement by closely examining business processes and activities in detail, mapping them and validating whether they make sense. This means that when they are measured, they perform to predefined expectations. Now, the second technique is to compare supply chain performance to other supply chains at all levels and to benchmark like for like, apples for apples, measures. By benchmarking performance, supply chains can identify gaps in competitive performance and determine steps to achieve better than competitive performance. Now, the third technique is to examine existing supply chain practices and identify all practices and technology solutions that result in significantly better performance. SCORE provides an easy-to-use basis for analysis to ensure that the existing supply chain is at least starting even with the competitors. Now, the final technique is to design organizations engaged in continuous learning and skill enhancement that are focused on performance. 
A unique feature about SCORE that sets it apart from most other supply chain improvement frameworks is not just its detailed list of processes, metrics, practices, and people skills. The advantage of SCORE is its ability to combine all four parts and add predefined relationships between material, information, and workflow processes. Now, this predefined relationship result from the research and collaborative effort that all participants in the SCORE development have contributed to. Of course, it is not perfect. It doesn't represent all business flows, but it is quite valuable for hitting 95% of most business flows in supply chain management. So most SCORE activities are actually cross-referenced and they are interconnected across the four score sections. That is all for this lesson. In the next lesson, we will learn about the most important part of the score model, and that is performance. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel as it really helps me a lot to continue dishing out the latest supply chain management trends and views. And don't forget to go to the ESCM website to go through the score model by yourself.